Most of the filters in Photoshop are applied via the filter gallery, which is located in the filter menu. For the filters that are not in the filter gallery, some will have their own individual dialog box, and a small handful of them are applied in one step from a submenu. Whatever the filter, all of these are accessed from the filter menu. A few things before we go over the steps for applying a filter. First, duplicate the background layer. You always want to make sure that any changes you apply to an image are done in a non-destructive way. A couple of additional options to consider are to 1. Change the duplicate layer to a smart object. This will allow the filter to become a smart filter. And 2. Create a selection. If you do this, the filter will be limited to the area that you have selected. Also, make sure that the foreground and background colors are set to the colors that you want. This will have an effect on some of the filters, not all, so it's always a good thing to check and set that before you apply a filter. After that, the steps for applying a filter are simple. Simply go to the menu, go to Filter, then scroll down to the list and choose whatever effect you like. The first one we'll talk about is the Filter Gallery. The Filter Gallery is where you'll find the majority of filters. With the Filter Gallery dialog box launched, you can preview several filters and their settings. In this dialog, you can show and hide the filters that you preview, and you can apply and change the sequence of them too. In this example, in the lecture, it's showing how you can preview the different filters by clicking on a thumbnail, or you can choose one from the list. Down here, you can click on the eye to hide or view a filter effect. And by clicking and dragging on the filter effect, you can move them to change the order of the effects. At the bottom, clicking on this icon will create a new filter effect. Sorry, I lost my, my place in the script, folks. Down here at the bottom, you can use the new filter layer effect, and it will allow you to apply additional filters. Uh, when you're done, you can select OK, and the changes will apply. If we jump over to Photoshop, I'll show you very quickly how to apply a filter from the filter gallery. So first, I'm going to reset my workspace since I kind of got it a little, a little messy. I have this, this image, and I would like to apply a filter to it. On the Layers panel, I've already gone ahead and I've duplicated the layer, and I've actually duplicated it twice because I want to show you how to create a filter as destructive editing, and then Whitney will take a turn and she will show you how to do it the right way, the, the non-destructive editing way. And so first, I'm going to apply a filter to this background copy to layer. On the menu bar at the top of the screen, you can choose Filter, and then choose Filter Gallery. When you launch the Filter Gallery, you get a lot of different options, and you can click through these. They're kind of hard to, to scan through. The bonus of having little thumbnails is you can kind of get an idea of what's going to be applied. But if you're going to click through and try different options, I actually recommend this drop-down bar on the right-hand side of the dialog box. And then you can quickly click through the different uh, filters that are available to you inside this dialog box. Um, as we said in the slideshow, you can add additional filters if you want. And so maybe I want to see what what underpainting and plastic wrap looks like. And so right now, I have plastic wrap applied. If you select the new icon at the bottom of the dialog box, you can apply a new layer effect, which immediately duplicates the one that you have. But now you could choose one of these two, and you could modify it. And so I can change the first one. Instead of being plastic wrap, I can make it underpainting. And then you could see what it looks like to apply plastic wrap and underpainting at the same time. You can also adjust the settings for the filter. And so with underpainting, I kind of like the way it looks. It's the grainy texture that's uh, moving horizontally back and forth. But I think that the plastic is just a little bit too much in your face. And so you can change the settings to make it look a little bit more subtle in your finished design. I want it to look really smooth. And then when you're done, if you select OK, you will apply those settings to your layer. And so if I was trying to take an image that you could actually see what it was and make it into something that you don't know what it was, I think I have succeeded. Yes? Yes. Later in the slideshow, we'll talk about ways to make this look more um, aesthetically pleasing for your design purposes, but right now you should be able to apply a filter from the filter gallery. Once you practice that and you feel comfortable with that, move on to our next video, and Whitney will show you um, how to do this as a smart object.